How do you memorize scripture? I was hoping someone would surprise me and not ask me that, but yeah. I, it takes hard work, my handsome brother, hard work. And I'm not joking, hard work. Um, I was invited to go to the house for food, Dr. Judas Palace, and uh, I was on the outside reading Bible verses while waiting for the food to be picked or cooked or gathered like manna. And uh, I was just going through some passages. I took the food to my place, and I was going through some passages. When I finished eating, I put on some music. There's some, there's some Bible passages I recite to pieces of music. I put that on, and I started reciting. I started reciting, reciting, reciting. So when I need it, it will come to me like that. Ella White writes in uh, My Character and Personality, Volume 2, page 601, Paragraph 4, that which at first seems difficult by Constant repetition grows easy, and right thoughts and actions become habitual. The same way sin becomes habitual, right thoughts and actions can become habitual. But no one becomes a demon overnight. No one becomes a saint overnight. It takes practice in demon whatever, or practice in righteous behavior. And so what I recommend to you is constant, constant practice. You may also write verses on three by four, take them with you and say them. I just say them, look away, look, look away, look, look away. That's how I do it, but I do it all day virtually. When I'm brushing my teeth, I say a chapter. When I'm showering, I recite a chapter or a passage. You see, you learn to do several things at the same time. Here I am taking a shower, that's, let's say five minutes. What else can I do with those five minutes? I can recite some Bible verses. I'm driving somewhere. Let's say you're driving from Amity to a Little Rock. How long is that? Two hours? What else can you do but just look at the road? Are you following me? Or chat with someone next to you. You recite Bible verses. If you only know one, John 11:35, Jesus wept. You say it and you think about it. You think, what is the message in this verse for me? And so what I recommend, but ask God to give. You see, when you desire something, no one can stop you. When the, the builders of the Tower of Babel, the Bible says, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded, Genesis 11, verse 5, and the Lord said, behold, the people is one, and have of all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. They were so determined to build that tower, God said, the only power in the universe that can stop them, that's me. He says, nothing will be restrained from them. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard of young people who jump out the window to go see their boyfriend or girlfriend. They fight with their parents. Nothing will restrain them. Are you following me? From seeing that little boy, little girl they love. Well, apply that to God's word. But also understand the value. This is your chief weapon against temptation. Christ's Object Lessons, page 100, paragraph 1. The scriptures are the great agency in the transformation of character. Jesus prayed, sanctify them through thy truth. This is the truth. What did Jesus tell the disciples in John 15 verse 3? Now you clean through the word. You understand the word in your head, not only memorized like a poem, but functioning as a, as a principle in your life. That is the victory. That is the power that intimidates Satan. And since you're all young, Psalm 119 verse 9, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways or young woman? By taking heed thereto according to that. We do not understand the power of God's word is released through the obedience of faith. The same power that said, let there be light, and the light came, is right in your hand. Ellen White writes, the same creative energy that called the worlds into existence is in the word of God. This word imparts power. It begets life. Every command is a promise. Accepted by the will. Received into the soul. It brings with it the life of the infinite one. It transforms the nature and recreates the soul in the image of God. Page 126, paragraph 4 of education. This is your power to conquer Satan. This is your defense against the overpowering deception that is already coming on this earth. This is your victory. Studied and obeyed. Christ's Object Lessons, page 100, paragraph 1, the last statement says, if studied and obeyed. They must go together. The Word of God works in the heart, subduing every unholy attribute. 
You name the unholy attribute you're wrestling with. Studied and obeyed. What does the devil do? He doesn't get you to rob banks. He just takes you away from the word. That's all. Take them from the word. Let them go to church. Let them go away canvassing. Let them have no time for the word. That's all. Now, he'd be delighted if you blew up buildings and whatever. But the fundamental thing is, get them from the word and you have them. There'll be decent vegetarians on the way to hell because they had no time for the word of God. This, and as Seventh-day Adventists, this plus the precious counsel of Ellen White. Sometimes I pray, I thank God for Ellen White's ministry. I thank God for the ministry of the pioneers. And Ellen White said, read what they wrote because they study the word in a way we do not understand. My young friends, this, by the matter of fact, this will improve your academic performance. Christ's Object Lessons, page 125, paragraph 3. If the follower of Christ will believe his word and practice it, there is no science in the natural world he will not be able to grasp and appreciate. What does that mean? Grasp means understand. Appreciate means connected with the great creator. If the follower of Christ will believe his word, and true belief requires action, and practice it. There is no science in the natural world he will not be able to grasp and appreciate. Want to do better? Here's your secret. Because it strengthens the mind, and it makes comprehension much easier. I recommend the word of God as your strength, your light. What should I do? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. What direction should I take? Psalm 25 verse 4. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. This is, you see, sorry for taking so long with this question. Tell me if this makes sense. How was the heavens made? By the word. How was the earth made? Then can you not see if you've been placed in a universe made by the word? There is no other life to live to be consistent with God's universe than to live by the word. And so Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. The same word that created the universe, the same word that sustains the universe, 2 Peter 3, 7, is the word by which you and I should live. This is life.